Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. If you're taking an NAD booster, does it matter what time of day you take it? This is the question that this paper, published in March 2023, the time of day defines NAD plus efficacy to treat diet-induced metabolic diseases by synchronizing the hepatic clock in mice, was investigating. Let's have a look at what they found. We all have a circadian clock which tracks the time of day based on internal and external cues. If this is misaligned, it can cause obesity, which is accompanied by reduced levels of NAD. Increasing NAD, whether by precursors or other means, is used as a therapy for metabolic dysfunction, but the impact of time of day when the therapy is administered is not known. In the study, the authors show that time of day is important for the efficacy of NAD treatment of metabolic diseases in mice. Augmenting NAD just before the active phase helped with metabolic markers, including body weight, glucose and insulin tolerance, liver inflammation, and nutrient sensing. However, raising NAD just before the rest period compromised some of these benefits, although some of them did remain. Augmenting NAD at this time inverted some of the clock genes in the liver. With the conclusion that the time of day when NAD is raised is of consequence to the outcome. In the paper, they use a nomenclature of Zeitgeber time. For any German speakers, apologies for my pronunciation. So, a quick background on how this works. A Zeitgeber, from the German meaning a time giver, is an environmental factor which acts as a prompt for the circadian system. In this case, they are using light. And in Zeitgeber time, the day starts at the beginning of the light phase, and the hours are designated as numbers after this time. So in a typical lab environment for mice, which has a 12-hour light-dark setup, it would look like this, with ZT0 being the beginning of the light phase and a switch to the dark phase at ZT12. However, mice are nocturnal. The Zeitgeber time does not change, but the active period starts at ZT12, not ZT0. In the study, the first administration was at ZT11 for one hour before the active period. They compared this to an administration at ZT23 or one hour before the rest period. So this would be equivalent to comparing first thing in the morning to the last thing at night for a human. In terms of how they raised the NAD, the authors directly injected NAD+. They did some tests to figure out a dose which would not unnaturally raise the NAD levels in the liver. The number they came up with was 50 milligrams per kilogram. The mice in the main experiment were four week old male C57 BL6J mice, which is roughly 14 in human terms. It was, it's not very relevant in this case, but if we follow the normal rules for conversion, 50 milligrams per kilogram for a mouse would be about four milligrams per kilogram for a human or 300 milligrams for a 75 kilogram person. The NAD administration was started at eight weeks and continued daily for the rest of the study. In the initial set of results, there are three groups, control, which were fed on standard chow, HF, which were fed on high-fat diet for eight weeks, and HFN, which were fed on the same high-fat diet, but after eight weeks also received the NAD boost. In the study, they looked at many benefits for NAD administration on the mouse liver, including detailed analysis of the genes which were expressed differently between the groups. I will not go into these, but look at the impact of the time of the administration. One thing they did see was that the NAD group significantly lost weight, though the diet did not change. I cannot find the actual numbers in the paper, but on the graph, it looks like about a 10% drop. The levels of NAD fluctuate with the circadian rhythm and impact the genes which implement the clock. NAD levels in the liver in the high fat group were out of phase with the control group, showing a distorted circadian rhythm. However, administration at ZT11 corrected this. The NAD administration also largely rescued the insulin resistance, which was increased in the group on the high fat diet. It also both reduced the total amount of triglycerides in the liver and brought them more in phase with the control group. 
Having seen the benefits of NAD administered at ZT11, they also tried at ZT23, which is just before the mouse rest period. First, in the body weight test, as done previously, there was minimal weight reduction, where you may recall at ZT11, the weight reduction was significant. Serum insulin, which improved with administration at ZT11, did not do so at ZT23, and the triglycerides in the liver remained high and out of phase. This reversal was not true for all the markers. Inflammation, for example, was lowered independent of the time of the administration. We can see here that the difference in inflammation between the HFN and the HFN23 group is not significant, and both of them are lowered. One effect of the administration at ZT23 was to invert the relative expression of the proteins of the circadian clock, BMAL1, clock, PRI1, etc. You can see that the blue line showing their activation when the NAD was administered at ZT23 is the inverse of the other three. These graphs show some of the same genes for the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is where the body-wide circadian clock is. In this case, the expression of the genes is unaffected by the NAD at ZD23, so the impact on the clock seems to have been restricted to the liver. A couple of things to mention in summary about this study. It was a mice, and they used NAD directly rather than a precursor to raise the levels. But the reason I looked at this paper was not the benefits that they saw in the liver, though those are potentially interesting, but rather how much the difference the time of day made when boosting NAD. Two years ago, we reviewed a paper which used a computer model to determine the best time to take an NAD booster, and it seemed to be around noon or ZT6. This new paper based on in vivo studies shows that at the beginning of the active phase, which is to say first thing in the morning is best. They did not try at ZT6, which would have been great to see for comparison. I have been taking NMN at midday, but I have now switched back to first thing in the morning. I hope that you found this useful. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.